So one of the problems with uh, promises is that uh, when we want to actually do things in a sequential way, our code still does not actually really look like it's being uh, done in a sequential way. I mean, uh, this code style is, uh, I mean, we just intended it in a special way so it looks like a, a, we are doing it sequentially, but actually we just uh, doing a whole bunch of, you know, something like a calling a function, then, you know, we're doing another function and we're calling another function. Well, so on okay so it's not really does not really look like sequential execution which uh, if we want to show the user or like the developer wants to see the steps that are happening one after the other uh, if you want uh, that look like you know really sequential in nature that's where uh, the async await syntax comes into the picture now async await is a syntax that uh, will not run on uh, very old browsers it will run only on browsers that have like uh, browser versions released after 2017 um, it will run on node.js version 8 and above it won't run on node.js versions below 8 so you'll have to like change things to the promise syntax if you want your code to be compatible with older browsers but there are a lot of tools like there's babel and uh, there is uh, typescript so there's a lot of tools which can you know uh, transpire the source code and uh, turn it into uh, uh, the old uh, promise syntax from the async await syntax uh, but uh, yeah I'm just running my code in a uh, modern uh, node.js uh, engine right now so I think I can use async await here without any problems uh, so I'm gonna do is uh, copy paste this uh, hello say promise uh, function uh, call uh, this file I'm gonna change it to async await hello say async await now, with async await, uh, the way you define the functions does not change. And that's very really important to understand that how we define the function does not change. What changes is how we uh, call it. So, remove this uh, stuff from here. Yep. Um, the code of how the function is defined is going to remain the same. No, no, no changes in that. Uh, what we do is we, now to be able to call, uh, use the await keyword we need to create a function with the async keyword so we'll create a async function and let's call it uh, some task let's just call it task whatever you want to do and make sure you call the task function afterwards so that the function actually does get executed uh, if you want this whole thing to happen uh, you know uh, i don't know like simultaneously uh, like uh, don't want to define and run it in separate lines of code you can um, Right, like this async uh, arrow function and put this entire thing inside brackets and then execute that. So it's called async ifies, um, IIFE, uh, immediately invoked function expression. You can do like this. I think for the case, for the use case of just uh, learning, I think uh, keeping it clear that we are creating the function and then calling it, it's better that I just show it this way to you. What I'm going to do is I'll do await uh, say hello um, or I'm just going to say hello say uh, and go off with uh, right um, let's just do right in that okay so I've called like hello say three times three different people and I'm, I'm gonna just uh, run this code and it's gonna run like all of these three things parallelly like Arnav, Pratik, Anuj and then Arnav, Pratik, Anuj like that so things are actually happening um, concurrently right um, but uh, what we can do is uh, add the await keyword in front of all of them so if uh, something is a promise object we can await a promise object. So the hello say when we call this function, it returns as a promise object, right? So since this returns as a promise object, we can add await here. Right. Um, and now if I run this code again, uh, oh sorry, there we go. As you can see now, it uh, calls under first, Pratik next, then Anuj, stuff like that. Of course, you can uh, uh, like make some changes like this uh, uh, maybe uh, now we have like these four things together now if I just want to call uh, Arnav and Pratik uh, parallelly and then rest of its uh, 
in a sequential way, I can do is uh, await and remove the await from these two things, and we can run this code. In which case, you see, uh, Arnav and uh, Pratik part gets uh, executed um, first parallelly, uh, but uh, the Anuj calls are also happening parallelly with this. Okay, uh, so what I have to do is I will only await on Pratik. Okay. And I'll run this. Now the Arnav and Prati calls are distributed among each other. But that's because the number is three here. Now if I turn it into ten, what happens is uh, you see the Arnav calls are interleaved. Like there is uh, Arnav here, here, here. It keeps on going. So uh, if I don't await something, it runs parallel to everything else. As soon as I await something, the execution stops till the promise is resolved. And only when the problem is resolved is the next line of code executed. Okay, so now our code looks actually sequential in nature. Uh, it, uh, like line number 18 is executed, and then line number 19 is executed, and then line number 20 is executed. So we say hello to Pratik to twice first, and once that is uh, job is done, then only we move on and say hello to Anuj three times. So when using away the way you type code looks. Uh, pretty much like the way you write a non-asynchronous code like you write three lines of code they always run one after the other no parallelism involved so if there are promises write a wait and they're gonna run uh, one after the other the thing is that when i'm awaiting something i cannot actually uh, you know mm, what, what do you say uh, i cannot actually uh, stop uh, the execution of the javascript thread i mean it, it, of course it will, uh, when i'm executing javascript i have only a single thread and if i stop that then there's nothing else that's gonna work out so that's why we have to first create an async function and uh, then we can write await inside that so this task function itself is a promise type of function because it's an async function and inside it i can wait for things okay now if i uh, you know uh, Right, say uh, hello, sir. Uh, something else like I write uh, like this, but uh, uh, you know, just reduce this and let's reduce this. Now, you will notice here is that although I call hello, sir, and then I call task after that, so the uh, you know, calls to Garima are running completely in parallel to the entire task. You know, uh, first it interleaves with uh, Arnav, and if I like increase this to say uh, 15, in that case uh, we will see that uh, you know the Garima calls they are just you know they go they continue uh, running uh, in parallel to the task. Now, if I uh, put it after task, does it happen after the task? Uh, you will see that. Uh, that's not the case. In, in fact, it actually does start simultaneously. Only difference in these two is that in this case, uh, the Garima execution started first and the Arnav execution happened after that. Uh, in this, uh, the next case, uh, uh, you will see hello Arnav happening first and hello Garima after that. But uh, the uh, execution of task and hello say they are all happening in parallel with each other. Now, at the uh, outermost level in your Node.js file, if you write await here, And I try to run this file. Uh, so I run this file. You'll see you'll get an error that await uh, cannot be used directly at the global scope. So you can use await only when you're inside an async function. You can't use await just anywhere you want. So you had to be in an async context to be able to await. Uh, because if the context is not asynchronous, then you cannot await because that will stop the thread from going ahead. And that will just you know slow down the project, create a lot of problems. Okay, so that's how the basics of the async await syntax uh, works. Uh, now, if I uh, want to run uh, some tasks parallelly and some sequentially, I'm going to show you something uh, really nice using promise dot all. Uh, but I think I'll do that in the next video after this. Uh, so I mean, this is pretty much about async await.